All right, let's turn our Bibles to Colossians chapter 4. If you would, you're excused. <coughs> no, but I'm going to probably need a Kleenex. Let me get those Kleenex a little closer to me. I don't have to climb up those. Here. You got extra? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I'll just go ahead and do that. Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. We covered verse 1 last week, but now we're down to verse 2. So uh, let's consider what Paul says here. Let me get there. I know about where it's at. It's in the New Testament someplace. I've got it. 17, 19. It's 14, 14 in mine. Y'all are no help at all. <laughs> Did I tell you I love you? I just love you guys. Our church council last night. If you don't ever get to come to church council, you miss out. It's, a, it's, if you want to see a man trying to herd cats, that's, it, it was like that last night. I mean, I think they had been on a sugar high or something when they came in there. I, Every time I turned around, I had to quiet them down and stop talking. And what? Case fault. It was case fault. I was, I was just a tad late, and I'm coming to the door, and Kay's saying, I make a motion that we call the meeting off because preacher's not here. I'm not. I'm one minute late. And she's already an insurrectionist. Rebel at heart. I know she is, but... Anyway, she is easily led. Well, anyway. And by the way, if you don't know, anybody and everybody's invited to come to church council. Anytime we have a council meeting, you can come. You're just not a voting part of it, but you're welcome to come and sit in and see what happens in there. It's usually about a 30 to 40 minute meeting and it moves rather quickly and uh, we get it done all right let's go on Colossians chapter 4 verse 2 continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving isn't it interesting how many times you find you read prayer and you're going to find thanksgiving somewhere around there amen it's almost like if you're going to pray you ought to be thankful amen, amen. that's just part of it and he says continue in prayer now we know the bible says in what is it? First Thessalonians five says, uh, "Pray without ceasing." Amen. Yeah. And have any of you ever tried to do that? <laughs> Driving your car down the road. Oh God, I pray that I pray that everything, everything goes well today. You know, it's kind of hard to do. But this is kind of where we're at. It's about persevering in prayer. It's about continuing in prayer. It's not about always being on your knees praying. It's about continuing in prayer. Don't give up on praying. It's continued in prayer. Um, it's uh, persevering. To be constantly diligent. Don't quit praying. Give yourself to it. Just pray. It's important that we pray. Set aside times for prayer. And then pray about everything. I was visiting with a fellow today, and we were talking about that very thing. He said, you know, I found that I've, I've, I find God, I find church taking place in some of the most unique places. And he said, I, I was talking to a fellow and he said he didn't have a, he said he was, he was going, having to go to the wash area to wash his clothes with his wife. And he said, why? He said, do you not have a washer or dryer? He said, you need one? I'll go buy one for you, you know? And he said, no, no, no. He said, we're praying about whether to get a new one or a used one. And we're just waiting to figure out what God wants us to do. And I thought that was interesting. He did too. He thought, this guy prays about everything. Everything. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. And for him, that was a witness to him of really a, a, a person that's committed to Christ. Prays about everything. Well, I guess. I don't, that may have been God's answer. I don't know. But... Uh, the thing was, is though, the guy was just insistent on the fact that he wanted to wait for God to show him. So that was kind of cool. So pray. So commit yourself to pray. So continue in prayer. And then watch in the, in the same with thanksgiving. Watch in the same with thanksgiving. Stay at it. Don't quit. And then uh, watch to keep awake. Um, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, watch. Uh, to keep awake. That is to watch. To be vigilant. Prayer with one eye open. Looking for God to answer your prayer. Amen? Is that the way you pray? I mean, when you pray, you think, God's going to answer this prayer. He is going to answer that prayer. Now, the problem is, is that we have a way. We want him to answer it. It may not be the way he's going to answer it, but he's always going to answer our prayers. It says, pray, pray, keeping one eye open, watching for God to answer your prayer. There should be such faith in your prayers that you expect to see God answer the prayer before you say amen. And lots of times it is. Remember, prayer is not about getting God to do what we want. It's about us coming in line with what God's going to do. Amen? And this goes back to that thing I brought out Sunday night about uh, when you're praying by faith <laughs> for God to move a mountain, don't be surprised if he hands you a shovel. Amen? Yeah. That's true, isn't it? Isn't that good? I just love that thought because it's really true. We think praying by faith means I go sit in the corner and wait to see if God's going to do it. Well, God's going to do it, but he may require you to be a part of it. You know, uh, it's, it's all part of God's plan that we we understand about pray, watching and praying, pray, and then <clears throat> pray with thanksgiving, with gratitude, actually grateful language. To God, it's an act of worship, grateful for all that God's done. You know what? I don't know. How people say, I can't pray for very long. Just if you start thanking God for everything, you'll go to sleep before you, end, before you get through praying. I mean it. You, just, you can't quit. It just starts and it just keeps going on and on and on. Because you're grateful for You should be grateful for everything. A grateful heart. I think God honors that too. I think we need to have that. I think if there's something that Christians are missing, I think it's gratitude. I think that's why they walk around sour pussies all the time. Because <laughs> they don't have any gratitude. They're not thankful for anything. They're just complaining because they don't have another thing or they don't have something else. Paul said we ought to be content in all things, right? That's what he said. <clears throat> be good if we would learn that. To be grateful. We could be grateful for the opportunity to pray. Thank you, Lord, for letting me pray. What did this cost for me to be able to pray? Well, it cost Jesus dying on a cross for me and for me coming to him for salvation I mean, think of what, how, what it takes for you to enter into the throne room of God. Nothing, because God did it all. Jesus did it all. We'll start thanking him for it. Amen? Be grateful for Christ who opened the door so you can pray. Be grateful for the answer that's on the way. Be grateful for God's concern and activity in your prayer request. Because God does care for what you care about. He is concerned. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> This is just crazy. Now I don't need water. I, I need to cough real hard. I need to clear, clear my throat like... <clears> throat> Amen. There, I think I got it. <laughs> I got one in my mouth. You know, slobbering down my throat. No, it's no, it has nothing to do with age. Oh, my goodness. Now, notice what he says next. He said, with all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. I love this. Think about this. Paul, Paul this would be my prayer for, this would be my request for you. Pray for me. Pray as I preach. Pray as God gives me opportunity to have the boldness to speak the word of God. Pray that, uh, pray that God would open up doors for, for, for sharing the gospel with people. You know, they're everywhere. The opportunities are everywhere for us to speak a word of witness to somebody. Everywhere. We're not ready because we haven't prayed enough about it. Amen? God dumps something in our lap. And we go, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, if we've been praying for God to open the door... To let us speak a word of witness to somebody. When God opened the door, it wouldn't be a surprise to us. It'd be an answer to prayer. Amen. And that's the way we should be. This is a kind of pray. This is evangelistic praying here. Praying for us that God would open that door of utterance. Um, 
And then he says, for which, for, which I, for which I am also in bonds. Why? Because he preached the gospel. Uh, poor old Paul, bless his heart. Uh, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Did y'all, did y'all, uh, I don't want you to answer this because I'll be disappointed. Uh, did y'all get to see me this morning, the devotion I gave? Some of you did. Don't raise your hand. If you didn't, did you get to read Acts chapter 19 today? I hope you did. If you did, if you're reading along with me through the Bible, you read Acts chapter 19. But the, the text I used this morning was awesome. In Acts chapter 19, it said this about Paul. It said that Paul, there were so many people that persecuted him for preaching the way, preaching the gospel, preaching about Christ. So what did he do? He pulled aside his disciples, went to the house of Tyrannus, and there he began to teach and preach. And for two years, he taught and preached evangelism. And from there, people would go out, and it said, all the residents of Asia heard the gospel. All, the Bible said that. All the residents of Asia, because Paul wouldn't stop preaching. He didn't let anybody stop him, you know? You ever get disappointed? Somebody says something, you go, okay, I just shut up and not say anything, you know? You try to tell somebody about Jesus, and they, I don't want to hear that mess, you old religious nut. And you go, oh, okay. Go find somebody else to talk to. Don't let anybody stand in the way of the gospel. And this is where we get the power to do that, through praying. Pray for God to give you power and utterance and a, a, a desire. And then put the opportunity in front of you. The doors are there. It's amazing when God opens the door. Listen, when you pray for God to open the door, and he does, you won't mistake it for anything else. It is amazing what he does. He just dumps people in your lap. He just goes, How'd that happen, you know? And it's because God put them there. If he knows you really mean it, he'll put somebody in your path. So he says, uh, pray for us. All right, then he says, uh, that I make manifest as, as I ought to speak. And again, I think that's a preacher's request to anybody. Please pray that, pray that I'm relevant. Pray that I'm correct, that I rightly divide the word of truth. Pray that, uh, that I, I, I speak with boldness, you know. Sometimes I can get a little, 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 little mini mouse kind of, I don't know, you know. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's all that way. I don't know. But no, be with boldness, you know. Especially coming up to the revival. Y'all pray for me to preach with boldness. Now, I want to preach like me. I don't want to preach like somebody else. But I want to preach with boldness. Get out of Moab, amen? I mean, you know, that kind of thing. That's what I'm going to be preaching, so that'll be good. Uh, I'm practicing that. Get out of Moab. What are you doing in Moab? I'm going to go around and look at people in their face. What are you doing in Moab? Get out of Moab. What's wrong with you? How long are you going to stay in Moab anyway? Come on, get out of Moab. Y'all like that? Somebody's praying for me right now, I can tell. <laughs> amen, amen. All right. Now then, let's go on. It says, verse 5, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeem the time. What? Walk with them with wisdom to them who are without. Who are them that are without? Without Christ, the lost. Walk with them with wisdom. I, I you know, I've been, I've been taught soul winning by some of the best and some of the worst. And uh, I've been with people who you're going to, you go with them, bless God, whoever they talk to, they're going to cram it down their throat whether they want to hear it or not, you know. And they leave a bad taste sometimes in people's mouths. There's a way to be a godly witness, a good witness, a productive witness that will leave the door open in case they don't respond. It leaves the door open for somebody else to come in behind you. You know, Paul said some, some of us are planters, some of us are waterers, and then God brings the increase. And some of us, we're planting. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, when you're planting a fruit, you're not, getting, when you're, you're not gonna get much fruit, amen? You're gonna get a sore back and, and bad knees. That's what you're gonna get. But uh, some are watering. They're taking care of it, making sure it's growing. They're not getting much fruit out of it. But the harvester, when he comes, he may not have planted it, he may not have watered it, but buddy, he's going to clean those ears of corn off of there. He's going to get whatever is there. And, and we just need to understand, some of us are planters, some of us are waterers, some of us get to harvest. 
pray for the harvest, he says. Pray for that harvest. And pray that God lets you have some of that harvest. Amen. But um, he's use wisdom. Walk in wisdom. Okay. Wisdom. When I think of wisdom, I have a particular book I think of, James. James deals with wisdom as much as anybody in the New Testament. So if you will, I want to go there for just a minute. Let's go, look at James chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. He begins by asking the question, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Who is that? I'm looking. Nobody's raising their hand. Billy is? He, she, you didn't raise your hand, but she raised it for you. A wise man endued with knowledge, it says. He asked the question, Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Now here's how you'll find him. Let him show out of a good conversation. That's his, his, his works. Let him show his a good conversation, his works with meekness and wisdom. So this man, whoever he is, he's going to show this wisdom through meekness. He, don't have, you don't have to, he doesn't have to tell anybody he has wisdom because people will know it. They see it. They hear it. They understand it. He has wisdom. But it says, But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Huh, isn't that interesting? So if you want God's wisdom, you can't have any of that other stuff in there. Amen? Envy, strife, can't be there. This, was, this is not what we're supposed to have. Envying and strife in your hearts. Glory not, he says, Lie not against the truth. You don't have wisdom. You're wrapped up in... And isn't it funny how many of us struggle with those couple of things? But we do. We get angry. We get bitter. Or we want something we don't have. And we get wrapped up in that. And why doesn't God let me have that? And I don't understand. I'm a good boy. I've done good things. I've done a lot of good things for God. Why doesn't he let me... Let me tell you something. One thing you ought to pray for is wisdom because you don't have it. Amen? According to this passage, you don't have it. Verse 15 of that text says, This wisdom descendeth not from above. What kind of wisdom? This, this earthly wisdom. This bitter, envying wisdom. It didn't come from heaven. It's earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. That's earthly wisdom. You know, I tell you, I, I want to tell you a story. We, we were in a church in Longview, and I was kind of the interim pastor at the time. They were looking at a, at a pastor, and there was, some, there was some real concern going on between whether they wanted him or not, and people were getting nasty with each other, you know, talking bad things, bitter, envying going on, strife going on. And so I had the meeting that night, and I thought, okay, I think I'll just teach this verse. So I got up, and I said, before we vote tonight, I want to share something with you. If you've come tonight, and this is who you are, and I read these things, if you are envying and strife, you realize your wisdom doesn't come from heaven? If, you're, if your wisdom is causing confusion, your wisdom doesn't come from heaven. I can tell you that I got some meaty, pretty meaty, mean glares from people that night. And I was a young man at that time, and it scared me. <laughs> and I was timid, but I continued. I said, the Bible says yours is devilish wisdom. <laughs> and you ought not to be that way. What you need is this other kind of wisdom, verse 17. But the wisdom that's from of earth is pure, and peaceable, gentle. Easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Let's go into this vote with that kind of wisdom. Amen. And I had about half the crowd said, Amen, and the other has a... <laughs> Don't me is right. I can tell you, I, I catch myself, I want to examine. If I if I have a bitter spirit, if I'm if I've got I'm wanting something to happen and it's not happening, and I'm getting upset about it, I want to stop and ask the question, what kind of wisdom am I demonstrating? Amen. Those are hard questions to ask in the middle of that, but you got to do it because we need to have heavenly wisdom. And I'm gonna tell you something, as a church people, let's maintain that heavenly wisdom. Amen. If you find yourself in that other group, 
get out of that group and get back over in the heavenly group. Amen? You're hanging with the wrong people if they're walking around bitter and angry and envying all the time. You need to be in this other group that's peaceable and, and gracious and kind and without a part. That's the kind of people you want to hang with. And I just may say this too. Who you hang with makes a big difference. Amen? It's true. And that's in church too. If you're hanging with somebody and all they do is just badmouth people all the time, want to gossip about somebody, find you a different set of friends. You say, well, they'll notice it. Let's hope they do. <laughs> Amen? Let's hope they do. And when they come to you and say, you know, you sang out with me. Why don't you? You know what? I just got tired of listening to you gossip. You say, Brother Jim, speak the truth in love. You know what? I'm going to say this because Ruby asked me this the other night. You know, you're a lot better off if you're just truthful with people. It may hurt at first, but in the end, it's going to be better for everybody. If you lose a friendship from being honest with somebody, you didn't have a friendship. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, don't do that with me now. That's all I ask. <laughs> I don't handle it well. <laughs> Be honest with people. With love, though. Not mean. With love. Just be honest. It's so good if we're just honest. All right. Let's go back to our text in uh, Colossians. Be wise in dealing with the lost. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. The way you deal with others should be a testimony to the lost of your commitment to Christ. Love them. Love the lost. I can love the lost, but I do not have to love their sin. Amen? It's easy to do. Because you know why? Because Jesus does that. He loves, he loves me even though I do some stupid things sometimes. And um, you don't know. Yeah, but, I, you know, we need to love like that. Love people for who they are. But you don't have to love their sin. And you can be honest with them. I love you, but don't expect me to, to abide with you if you're going to live this way. I love you. I care about you. I wouldn't tell you that if I didn't care about you. So I hope you understand that. I'll be honest enough to, with you, and I'll love you enough to be honest with you. That's important that we do that. Redeeming the time, verse 5 goes on to say, redeeming the time. Part of walking in wisdom is learning to use your time well. Use your time well. There's nothing wrong with leisure. There's nothing wrong with naps in the afternoon. Y'all hearing me on that? Whether intentional or non-intentional, there's nothing wrong with naps in the afternoon. If you walk in my office and you catch me sleeping with my eyes closed, understand I was... Or I'm not, if you catch me praying with my eyes closed, I was... Mm, redeem the time. Listen to this. I, 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 I thought this was good. Mark chapter 6, verse 30, 32. Jesus says this. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus. And told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. Verse 31 of Matthew 6 is this. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into the desert place and rest a while. Don't you love it that the Lord said we can rest a while? We need rest, amen? For there are many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into the desert place by ship privately. He called them unto leisure to set aside a time to rest. To rest. There's nothing wrong with rest. But if you ask us about our trip to, to Branson, our intent on going to Branson was to rest. And we did. We went to some shows. You saw that. But we didn't do that many. And they better be over early. Because we're headed back to the apartment to put our feet up and just do nothing. And we did a lot of nothing while we were in Branson. I won't tell you we did. I'm not ashamed of it because that's what we needed. I, and I came back. I'm, I don't know if y'all noticed, but I'm, I'm refreshed. Amen. Good for you. I'm, I'm enjoying things. I, it's, it's really good. We need those times of just rest. Haywood was sharing with me. They went on a cruise. And he said, we just decided we, was gonna, we didn't do anything. We just get on the cruise to rest. Took some books. And he said, when everybody else was jumping off the boat and going all kinds of places, he said, we just found us a duck chair and we just read. He rested. He said, he told me, it's probably the best vacation he's had. That's true. 
Some of us pack, I do, I pack my vacation so full, I don't get any rest, and I come home, I'm wore out. We ought to find times to rest. If not, if not on vacation, at least sometime during the day, we ought to find time to rest. We need to have that. Go to bed early. Sleep in a little bit one day. It's okay. As long as it's okay with your boss. All I can say about that. Verse 6. Verse 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace. Seasoned with, hello, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Gracious speech is a lost art, isn't it? And I'll tell you why. Northerners. <laughs> it's true. It's true. They don't know gracious speech. Us Southerners, we got it down. We got this gracious speech down. Amen. How are you? Where are you from? You know, I told y'all, we were, I had on my Texas shirt. Y'all see my Texas shirt? Texas shirt had on my Texas hat. And we were leaving the parking lot of one of the shows we'd been to there in Branson. And we were visiting with this lady in her car. And I was leaned over in the car like this, just like this, looking at her. And I asked her, so where are you from? And she told me, she said, where are you from? Oh, you're from Texas. <laughs> you should have known by my speech. Amen. Amen. No. Gracious speech. You know, we ought to practice that a little bit. We ought to, we ought to think about it. I mean, honestly. Think about it when you're around somebody. How can you graciously say something to somebody? Somebody you don't know. You're in the elevator with a bunch of people and y'all all looking at the ground. What could you say in a gracious manner that make people understand that you're, you've got something special going on. You know? And isn't it beautiful outside? Are y'all enjoying the weather? How do you like this ride? You know? I hope your last trip is up. I think that's a good one. You know? You know it is so funny. If you, if you ever talk in an elevator, I know many of you don't do it. If you ever do, you're going to find such a great response. They love it because they feel so awkward. They're standing there going, well, should I say something? Should I say something? I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just be quiet. Better to keep my mouth shut and let them think I'm dumb than open my mouth and then prove it. Go ahead and prove you're dumb. I'm from Texas. I'm going to say dumb things, and I'll just say it. You know, it's so neat to find times when we can just open up and just share with somebody, talk to them. You know, nobody wants to be a stranger. Nobody wants to be a stranger. And many times if we would just take the opportunity, it opens up doors for a witness, it opens up doors for them to hear and to see somebody that genuinely cares for people. And that's the way we ought to be. Just love. And then it says, seeds with grace, seasoned with salt. Ooh, salt. It'll burn, yeah. It'll burn you. Burn a wound, won't it? Yeah. I think he's speaking of that truth that we're supposed to have. I think. That uh, salty speech, Mark 9, 50 says, salt is good, but if salt has lost its say, saltiness, wherewith shall it be seasoned? Have salt in yourself and have peace one with another. It's truthful, honest, forthright. There's, everybody loves somebody that's honest. They love people that are honest. I tell you, I like that guy. Because I can tell you one thing, he's honest. This jacket... <laughs> I love this jacket. I think it's one of the prettiest jackets I have. It sits in my closet. I don't wear it very often because when I put it on, when I see it on that, that video, I'll open it up tonight and see it, I'll think, that's a car salesman. <laughs> yeah, it's a car salesman in Texas. You know, he's got that, he's got that, that big old plaid suit, you know. And I, I don't know why. It reminds me of a car salesman. But you know what? I don't mind car salesmen as long as they don't lie to me. As long as they tell me the truth. Be honest. My son-in-law, Juan Guerrero, is one of the top car salesmen in Longview. And I'm going to tell you, it's not because he lies. It's because he's honest. People will drive to Longview to buy a car from Juan. They drive from San Antonio. They'll call him and say, do you have this car? Yes. I'll be there tomorrow if you'll have it ready for me. And they'll drive from San Antonio. San Antonio's full of cars. Why don't they buy one there? Because they want to deal with somebody that's honest with them. 
And I'm telling you, people are like that. My brother, Andy, was, he was, Andy would have fun. He could tell a story and a yarn like a mile long. But I'm going to tell you something. He wouldn't lie to you. You knew when he told you something, he was honest. And people loved him for that. He was a great businessman because they knew they could trust him. People like honesty. If you think you've got to lie, if you think you've got to not be completely honest with people in order, again, to make them like you, you're, you're getting the wrong kind of like from them. They ought to like you because you're honest with them. Speak the truth in love. Now, this is going to be a neat place to end because now what's going to happen is the rest of the week, y'all are going to be running around telling each other honest things. And Sunday, I'm going to have to preach on forgiveness. Amen? <laughs> and... Uh, but that's okay. If we have to do that, we will. But uh, y- y'all get the picture, right? Paul gives us, a great, he gives us a great lesson tonight about our walk, about our talk, about the way we should live. This is important. This is who we're supposed to be. Let's be these kinds of people. Um, all right. Any question? Excuse me. Comment or thought? Yes. Wait. We're bringing the microphone. Am I on? Check. Check. Check, please. All right. Just a comment. My grandmother used to say you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. That's true. And if people know that you act and speak as if you love them, even if they're horrible people, that door is open. Yep. For a witness. That's right. Be honest, though. Yeah, that's good. Yes, Lawrence. I noticed Sunday night, I watched the video Sunday night, and we have many gay testimonies. And like Patty up here at front, I, I love the fact she turned around, and people on video could see her. Now, I know, Lawrence, I'm not going to ask you to turn around. You're sitting on the back row. That'd look a little funny, but they, see the yeah, there's a, they look at the back of your head. That's fine. Uh, to compliment what you said about being in the elevator, when Ruth and I were on vacation, we would make a point to talk to the people in, mm-hmm. in, in the elevator, and you could see a light and their face light up. But another thing that's very, very important, when you walk around, walk around with a smile. Amen. I've seen people in Walmart walking towards me, and their head's kind of down, and they have a frown on their face. They look up, and I smile at them. And then their whole demeanor changes. So uh, you can shine your light just walking down the road. That's true. And I'll tell you something. You, a good thing to ask people is where are you from? You know, people love to tell you where they're from, especially like you're in Branson. Everybody's from somewhere. And you say, where are you from? I'm from Branson. <laughs> you like living here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brother Marshall. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that your jacket does not look like a car salesman. It looks like a God salesman. A golf salesman. God salesman. Oh, God. Salesman. God salesman. Okay, I thought it was a golf. God salesman. Amen. Thank you, brother. Right here. Billy's not through yet. I mean, Patty's not through yet. Billy, Billy, and Patty. One good way to break ice is t-shirts you read somebody's Mm t-shirt the the funniest one i ever did this big brawny guy and a little short wife were in the grocery store and he had a t-shirt on that said nothing short of perfection well she that t-shirt waved a red flag in front of the bowl Mm -hmm. i went off on that i said i can't believe i found you i've been waiting all my life to find the perfect man and it went on. By the time it was over, people, there were, must have been 10 or 15 people around us just laughing their heads off. We had the best time, and I got hugs from both Amen. of them. T-shirts, they just melt everybody. I mean, you have on a fabulous T-shirt. You know, it, it, take advantage of it. Use your imagination to play with it. You may have peanuts. Oh, I love peanuts. Think about it. T-shirts are a great icebreaker. Okay. Amen. Somebody else? Getting some great ideas about how to be, I don't know about gracious, but at least we're, well, that's gracious. But you get a chance to talk. That's what's important. Uh-huh, Barney? 
Uh, years ago, I worked at Walmart in Denton, uh -huh. and one of the store managers, well, I didn't get along with too many store managers, but uh, this one particular one, I'd, in seasonal, I would put on a bow or a hat or something really stupid, uh -huh. but people would laugh at sure. you know, and smile. And he got on me one day and he said, that's not very professional. I said, well, if Walton can stand up on Wall Street and do a hula, then I don't care if I'm not professional. There if I go. can cause a smile on someone's face, that's, right. that's all that matters. That's right. That's good. I tell you, wear Texas, one of them Texas shirts in another state and see what happens. I, I had people. I had people stop me. I mean, honestly, this one guy, big guy, he come by, and I saw he had an Arkansas shirt on, and he come towards me, and I thought, oh no. <laughs> and he walked up, and he said, "I said, <laughs> it's good." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She was talking about. I wore my I wore my Texas shirt to the to uh, the Haygoods show, and when it was over, there was there was like four bands that were up there for spring break from Texas, and uh, so whenever we dismissed and we were going out, they kept them seated, you know, because they were going to load them on buses, and we came up that aisle, and I mean they were band bumping me and yeah, dude, <laughs> gig them, I mean all kinds of stuff. It was crazy. I mean you know, but it was true. Yeah, all right. We ready? Uh, I know the choir's got to be busy tonight, so we're going to get them started. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer, and we'll let them have the building. Y'all, let's stand, okay? Heavenly Father, tonight we're so thankful and we love you for the word of God and how, Lord, you've, you've commended to us some ideas that we may need to work on. Some of us need to work on our prayer life. It's not what it ought to be. We don't pray about everything. Some of us, Father, need to work on our gracious speech. Some of us need to work on uh, our living a witness and looking for opportunities to witness. Lord, you've given us so much to think about tonight. May we choose one thing tonight that maybe we're not good at and begin to concentrate on getting better at that. And I love you, Father. I love these folks. I know you do. And I pray, God, you'll bless us now until we meet again on Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.